Three, two, one, go! 10 seconds for Cyberpunk, that is not bad. Is it gonna get close to the Gen 4? Will we find out in just a second? Yes! Today we're here to answer one question and one question only, and it's a big one. When you're buying your gaming rig, should you buy a hard drive, a SATA SSD, a Gen 3 or Gen 4 PCIe SSD? Does it make any difference to game load speeds, and ultimately, are the better ones actually worth the money? That's right, serious video today, no time for mucking about at all. The gaming laptop you've been waiting for has arrived. The latest Omen 15 not only looks incredible, but comes packing some serious gaming performance. The new, smarter chassis is remarkably thin and light, yet it uses the latest Intel and AMD processors for all-you-can-eat portable power. Play games at sky-high frame rates with the optional 144Hz display, and then bask in the glory of super smooth gameplay thanks to the mighty NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics cards. Learn a little bit more about this incredible gaming machine today with that link down below. So yes, this is an absolutely huge question and if you are building a gaming PC or a PC really of any description, it's probably a question that you have asked yourself. If you look at the raw performance of these new drives, then they are so much better than the ones that came before it. I mean, look at the difference between my old hard drive and then this brand new Samsung 980 Pro PCIe Generation 4 drive. It is incredible the difference. But is that actually going to translate into a better gaming experience? Because in terms of FPS, it's not really going to make any difference. There are some games where there are some weird bottlenecks, but generally speaking, no. So it's all going to come down to load speeds. So let me introduce you to our contenders. We have a Western Digital Black Drive. Not this one, it's actually inside the PC. It is one terabyte in size, and this is actually, I think, the first good hard drive I bought. The manufacture date was 2013, so this is very much representing your old hard drive that you have lying around. Next up, we then have the Samsung 870 EVO, and this one is brand spanking new. But the problem is that this is a SATA drive and it's going to be priced fairly similarly to some other NVMe drives that you can get, which means that for a lot of people, this isn't really going to make sense unless you actively need a two and a half inch drive. But I suppose that the price will come down a little bit as this gets a little bit less new. Moving on to the real deal, we now have the NVMe drives. Right off the bat, you can see that these are a completely different form factor to all of the others. They're nothing new now. They've actually been out for quite a few years. They've become, I guess, mainstream. They're getting very affordable as well. Well, but if you're wanting a Gen 4 drive, then these get ridiculously fast. The main caveat is that you are going to need a B550, an X570, or the upcoming Z590 motherboards, or at least an 11th generation chip and a Z490 motherboard. This drive is the 980 Pro, and it's the fastest Gen 4 drive that I have on hand. Sadly, it is only a 500 gigabyte version, so it is gonna muck up our test ever so slightly. But the question is not whether these drives are fast. The question is whether this will actually translate into any better gaming performance. And if you're looking at price to performance, is it actually gonna be worth going for a faster drive? Or is even the hard drive perfectly fine for what you're going to want to use it for? Let's find out. The way that this test is going to work should be pretty straightforward really. We have our complete setup ready to go. We've got four drives installed. I've tested all of the speeds. They're all working properly. We have four games. We've got The Witcher 3. We've got Cyberpunk. We've got Civilization 6. And what's the other one again? Far Cry 5, that's it. We've got Far Cry 5 installed, so a variety of games. And I'd say that the newer the game, the faster the difference should be. But let's put it to the test. We're going very high tech today. We have a notepad, we have a pen, we have a stopwatch, and we're just gonna note down how long it takes to actually load the games. Aren't you glad it's me doing this, not you? Okay, first test then, Cyberpunk. In theory, this should be the most optimized, because it's the newest. Definitely no bugs in this game at all. Go. Gonna have to be quick on the draw here. The second it says it's done, I'm expecting this to be quick. Oh, there you go, 10 seconds for Cyberpunk. That is not bad. All AMD system this as well, running Cyberpunk. If you do wanna see the full video about this PC, by the way, and what it can do in Cyberpunk with frame rate and everything, hit the eye in the top right corner of your screen. Nothing like a bit of self promo now, isn't there? Is there? Now is there? Cock. Are you ready for The Witcher 3? Three, two, one, go! 12 seconds. Collect all the missing cards in the Skellige deck. 13 out of 19. I friggin' loved Gwent. Gwent was awesome. Far Cry 5, three, two, one, go! 
There you go, boom. 11 seconds. The irony with our final game, Civilization VI, is that this is probably the smallest game I have installed on any of my PCs right now, but this is always the one that takes the longest to load. I think it's because there's a lot of very small files it's got to pump in there. It's very complex, so it should be a very good test. Once more into the breach, resume game, go! Oh, there we go, boom. 16 seconds, 72. I told you it was the slowest, didn't I? I told you. Marcus is always right. Drum roll, please. The hard drive from 2013 should be absolutely awful versus the best of the best when it comes to Gen 4 SSDs. Is there going to be a big difference? Far Cry 5, go. What did we have before? We had 11 seconds and 21. So immediately, this is going to be the test to know how bad or close things are going to be. I'm just filling for time here. 28 seconds versus, what did we have? 11. So... What's that, about 140% more time? If you're playing a heavier game, or you're playing a game, I guess, like Far Cry, when you're doing a lot of fast traveling, then that time is all gonna add up. Think about it, over the years, the amount of time you could save, that is quite a few cups of tea that you have in your book. Or hopefully not in your book, in your belly. Get in my belly! Get your bids in, boys. What do you reckon? SATA SSD. Is this going to be the right price to performance? Is there going to be much of an improvement versus the hard drive? Is it going to get close to the Gen 4? Will we find out in just a second? Yes. 11 seconds and 92. Maybe caught that a little bit late, but not much in it. 11 seconds. The Gen 4 SSD did it in 10 seconds and 41. This did it in 11.92. So really not much difference there at all now is there which are three which are three which results are we gonna get <laughs> that's a that's a loose joke that one imagine actually spending time with me it must be horrible there we go 11 seconds 93 versus 12 seconds 08 over on the gen 4 so basically exactly the same circumstantial no difference I really did think, you know, that there would be a difference between the Gen 4 drive and the others, just because it is so much faster. But clearly at the moment, the bottleneck does seem to be somewhere else. Do you hear that noise? No, you don't. Because there's no horrible spinning hard drive going... <coughs> hate hard drives. Which brings us on to our final drive. Drum roll for the Gen 3 SSD. Woo! That's it. I'm free. I don't need to do any more tests now and you don't need to see them or I spared you that. The Gen 3 was actually pretty similar to what I expected, but there were a couple of results where it did come out on top of the Gen 4 drive. This could just be circumstantial. It could be because this is a one terabyte drive, whereas the Gen 4 was 500 gig. We're not sure. But ultimately, what does all of this tell us? Well, it is pretty straightforward, really. If you're looking at buying a gaming PC and all you're going to be using it for is gaming, then clearly the SSD that you go for doesn't make a huge amount of difference in the grand scheme of things. I think in the future, this will change because of things like Microsoft's direct storage API. 
and the ability to actually change the way games work to make them not only more optimized, but to have new settings that can load more things directly from the SSD into the graphics memory, that's when something like a Gen 4 SSD is really going to start to make a whole lot of sense. And I stand by the fact that I think that in the future there will be different game settings that will need fast drives to properly work. But ultimately, today is not that day. So if you're watching this video and you want to buy some more storage or you're buying a whole new gaming computer and you're wondering what sort of budget you should allocate to the storage, then as long as you're not buying one of these, I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. But I would probably go for one of these, a Gen 3 SSD, because they're not really much more expensive than SATA drives, to be honest with you. And they do give you a whole bunch of benefits across your system, and in certain games it will make a difference, but ultimately, as we saw, not all of them. As for Gen 4 PCIe SSDs, something like the 980 Pro is a fantastic SSD, but it's not properly utilized in games at the moment. So I'd only go for something like this if you're gonna use it in a whole bunch of other applications that you know you'll be able to properly utilize this speed. Let me know your thoughts on this video though. Were these the results that you expected to see? Did you think that the Gen 4 SSD would pull out ahead? Did you think that the hard drive would be slower? I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Let me know what you've bought recently or are going to buy down in that comment section below. Don't forget to smash that like button. This video took a long time to make, so I'd really appreciate some love on this one. Do get subscribed as well for more videos just like this, including those epic PC builds that you can find in the end screen. And of course, all of the products that have been featured here today will list down in the description below with my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out the brand new Omen 15. Equipped with NVIDIA RTX graphics, you not only get super smooth, sky-high frame rates, but the next generation of gameplay thanks to real-time RTX ray tracing and AI-enhanced DLSS 2.0. Combine that with NVIDIA's Reflex tech and the mighty Omen Tempest cooling system, and you'll be able to play and win for hours on end. Turn up the volume with Bang & Olufsen Audio and customize it your way with the Omen Gaming Hub. Check out the Omen 15 today with that link down below. But thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.